Hello, there, ho, and my name is Great, and welcome to my little Cantonese corner. Although I'm not in my little Cantonese corner because I was kicked out. Um, my son today had a date with a Call of Duty friend to play this afternoon, and so I wanted to take advantage of the sunlight in this beautiful day to record a video. And so here I am in this room. And um, do you notice these on the wall? If you uh, live in Hong Kong and you frequent Loyang Gai, which is Ladies Market in Mong Kok, you will have seen these for sale and you probably have wondered who'd buy those. Well, we did. So there's the pig and the frog and those are from Loyang Gai in uh, Wong Kok, in Mong Kok in Hong Kong, Hong Kong, which is not where I am right now. I'm still waiting to get back. I'm so happy to hear that things are going better in Hong Kong. Um, coronavirus uh, infections, I guess, are down to zero for the 14th day or something. Um, quite a few days now where they've had no new infections in the community. And so things are starting to open up again. And I'm just hoping that I'll be able to get back there um, very shortly because it's been now since Chinese New Year since I've been here in the US, which has been wonderful. And um, it's really been wonderful. And even now when things are kind of shut down in the state where I am, they are, um, they still have shut down most of the businesses. But, um, and if you hear every once in a while a loud cry, yeah, that's from the Call of Duty uh, fighting that's going on out there. But um, yeah, things here are, are on the upswing as well. I think businesses are going to start opening, at least some of them very soon, like the salons and uh, dentist offices, things like that are going to be opening. So that's all a very good thing. But I thought I've been wanting to do this video for a while now because as most of you know, I teach Cantonese over on Cantolingo on my uh, website there. And I, one of the things I try to do for the students there is to get them to understand why they're not able to speak Cantonese. Um, a lot of them have tried learning and it just hasn't been working, or they have been trying on their own and it hasn't been working. And so this is something that I have thought a lot about, and I would like to put out there five reasons why you cannot speak Cantonese and how you can overcome these to be able to speak it. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, the number one reason why I believe most people can't speak Cantonese is simply because they think they can't. Now, either that's something that they think themselves or so many people have told them that they can't because that's something that you hear all the time. I don't ever hear somebody saying, when you say, for example, I want to learn French, there's nobody out there saying like, you can't learn French, it's too hard. But if you tell people you want to learn Cantonese, that's that's what you're going to hear. Nine times out of 10, you will hear people telling you, you can't learn it. It's too hard. There are nine tones. It's impossible. And whether or not you, um, maybe you don't believe that at first. You're like, how hard can it be? I can do this. And then you start and you realize that, okay, maybe this isn't as easy as I thought it was going to be. Um, and then you kind of flounder and you think they're right. They're right. It is hard. It's impossible. I can't do it. And that's just obviously not true. So here's some ways that you can overcome that feeling or, you know, when somebody tells you that, you know, you can't learn it, ask them how they learned it. Okay. Because for example, in English, we speak English at home and then we go to school and we actually learn English. We learn phonetics. Well, back in my day, we did. I know this whole language learning, they don't they don't teach phonetics as much, but you've got letterland phonics. You've got these different things to actually teach you the language. Um, then you go on to literature. You go on to all these different things. Cantonese is completely different. You don't go to school to learn Cantonese. So if somebody is telling you, you can't learn it, it's like, well, that's because the only way they've been able to learn it is from their parents or from other people speaking it to them. They don't go to school to learn it. Therefore, they don't know how to learn it. They've never been taught Cantonese in the sense of you sit down and you learn the tones and you learn the words and you learn the. <laughs> it's just not something that they're even familiar with is how to go about learning it. So that's the first thing I would say is ask them, well, how did you learn it? I'm learning it. You didn't actually learn it. You just grew up with it. The second thing that you could tell them if somebody tells you you can't learn is to simply to say, maybe I can't. 
maybe I can't, but I'm going to try and just accept that that's just what they're saying, but you don't have to internalize it, you know, accept it for what it is and just let it go right in one ear out the other. They say, I can't, maybe I can't, but maybe I can. Now, the second reason why you can't speak Cantonese is because you are afraid. You're afraid to make mistakes. You're afraid that people are going to laugh at you. You're afraid that they're not going to speak Cantonese back to you. You're just generally afraid you'll say the wrong thing. Your fear is holding you back. And so that's why you need uh, a way to overcome this is to really know why you're doing this. Why are you learning Cantonese? All right. For me, it was I couldn't stand the fact that people were talking about something and I didn't know what they were saying. I always assumed they were talking about me. Okay, always. Even if I'm, I mean, even if they weren't, and it was obvious they weren't, I would still think it would be something that I would want to know about or something that might pertain to me if it wasn't directly about me. So that was my big why. And it, I didn't care what I had to do. I just hated that feeling. Another way to overcome this fear is to be in a comfortable environment to speak Cantonese. A lot of times people that are learning make the mistake that everyone is going to be so happy that they're learning Cantonese that they're going to help them. And that is not the case, especially in Hong Kong. If you go somewhere and your Cantonese is so-so, but you know, you're struggling and maybe, maybe you're not struggling, but you're just afraid. Like you can do it at home and then going out there and trying to use it in the marketplace or somewhere. Um, it doesn't work because they're just like, why are you bothering? I, mean, I can speak English well enough and we can do this transaction if you're buying something. Uh, and so that doesn't really work. What you need to do is you need to find someone who doesn't speak English and they want to sell you something. Okay, so they're, they're going to take the time to make you happy so that you buy something. Uh, that could be, it doesn't always happen like that. People are different and you're not always going to find somebody who's going to be uh, helpful. But if you have been out and about in Hong Kong and you're not finding people to help you, go to the wet markets, go places where people don't speak English. Um, maybe they're not having a great sales day. They want to get something sold and they're going to have the time to speak to you in Cantonese and get you to understand so that you buy something. Okay. That's another little tip. A very good example of someone who's not afraid is Jordan over at Cantonese Couple. And I'll link to one of their videos uh, above. She's amazing because she lives in the U.S. Um, and she is married to a Chinese guy, Steve, but she's fearless. I mean, in all the videos, she just, just gets on with it and just speaks Cantonese. And you can tell that she knows the tones and you can tell that she is aware of where they should be. And whilst the tones may not be exactly right or the pronunciation of some of the words may not be exactly right, like the CH sound comes out a little bit strong, but overall, it's amazing. You can totally understand what she's saying. And I think that that's a really good example of somebody who just gets on with it and doesn't really let the fear hold them back, uh, the fear of, of anything. The third reason you may find it difficult to speak Cantonese is that you don't know the tones. Well, not really. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean that you may have learned the tones. You may know that there are six tones and they are numbered one to six in Yutpeng. And in Yale, they are the high tone, the mid-rising, the mid-tone, the low-falling, the low-rising, and the low-tone. But relative to each other, uh, you're not really sure. Like, for example, for a long time, I thought that the uh, low-tone, the sixth tone, was the lowest one. But in fact, it's not. The fourth tone starts here and goes right down. So the fourth tone is, in fact, lower, ends lower than the sixth tone does. So that causes a bit of confusion. Another reason is that you might be... Uh, a lot of the students that I that I come across are quite timid. They don't really know the parameters from the first tone to that low falling fourth tone. And so as a result, they kind of aren't really sure where in this range they can be. And it turns out that they're not going high enough for the high or low enough for the low falling low. And that's something that uh, I do a lot of work with in the different tones, combining, for example, the first tone and fourth and fourth and first. So they set that boundary. And then within that boundary, then it becomes a lot of fun to do like the mid rising and the low rising and the low falling 
and the third and sixth tone. Then you can really have fun with it when you know what your highest is and what your lowest is. So that might be another reason. A lot of times the reason that this happens is because you might be learning from a resource, from a book, and learning the tones, and then you're also picking up Cantonese by t uh, talking to native speakers, friends, family members, or perhaps you grew up with the language, and so you're remembering uh, from when you were a child what it sounded like, but you're still not really sure, is that six, is it three, is it, <laughs> you know, like that kind of, that kind of um, conundrum, dilemma, like which one is it? And so it's very helpful to use a dictionary. Um, good Cantonese dictionaries that are in print are quite hard to come by. I have a few that I really love that I've, you know, um, talked about on another video. Um, also, the online dictionary, Cantonese Chic, is also very, very good. Then once you have uh, that dictionary, you can then keep a notebook. And of these words, you just write down the word and you put the tone mark next to it so that you remember the meaning and also the tone. And that will help a lot to overcome this issue. The fourth reason you can't speak Cantonese is because you either have the wrong teacher, the wrong school, or the wrong friends to help you learn. And that's something that you have to know yourself, really. Is this working for me? And if you keep pushing against trying to learn a certain way that they want you to learn and you're not really communicating well with your teacher or with your, you know, at the school you're at or with your friends, then I think you need to change and find somebody that you really click with that really makes it make sense to you so that you can learn and progress in the language. Um, as for your friends, um, I've got friends that I will never speak Chinese with and they're native speakers because it just isn't it's just not the right feeling. I don't know how to describe it, but you know what I mean. Like you've got certain friends that you'll share certain things with and other friends that you just don't. And it's just like that with the language as well. So instead of expecting everybody to embrace this, um, your desire to learn, uh, recognize that there are some friends that are probably never going to condone or, or want to help you uh, speak Cantonese for one reason or another. And you may not even know the reason, but to remove yourself from the outcome is really important. Remove yourself from the outcome that anybody is gonna help you learn because it will just lead to frustration and you will get down on yourself and feel you can't do it and why aren't they helping? And that's just something you want to avoid. So remove yourself from the outcome of your expectation that they're going to help you. And the fifth reason that you can't speak Cantonese is the wrong system. Now I know you guys, if you follow me, you know that I am very partial to the Yale system, but I've been learning more about the Yutping system and I still don't like it. I don't think that, I think it's very academic. I think it's very too precise. I think that it is very off-putting in a lot of ways. And so if you have been learning with Yutping, which is the system with the numbers, and instead of a Y, they're using a J and a few other letter switches that just don't seem to make a lot of intuitive sense, if you're an English speaker or you've learned English and you know English phonetics, um, that can be a real drawback. I was super disappointed to learn a couple days ago that last year, Chinese University, the Yale in China Language Institute out there, where is where, which is where I learned, well, it's not where I learned my, my Chinese, but I did go to a summer class there once and I learned their books for learning to write characters, which are beyond brilliant but I've now since learned that they're going to start using Yutpeng. And I'm like, no, because I think there's a real useful place for the Yale system. So hopefully they're not completely converting to Yutpeng, but I do think that Yutpeng mixing the numbers in with a written thing just is so not the way my brain and I'm sure a lot of other people's brains work. To me, it's like a conductor. I can't imagine a conductor conducting an orchestra with the the sounds and the, the the movements of the baton and his hands and everything. And all of a sudden, him not doing anything and just saying one, three, five. I I just even though musical music is very mathematically you know delineated and all the rest of that, but it just doesn't make sense. You want to see those movements. You want to see the accent marks. And I just was so upset kind of sad to hear that Yale is buckling and they're using the Yutpeng. Now, maybe they're only using it as a supplement or something like that. And I do think that Yutpeng is useful. Um, uh, uh, it's not useful, okay? 
my honest opinion, Yupeng is not useful. I don't think that there's anything that you um, can't learn from a native speaker in Yale. And so it's not a horrible, terrible, bad thing, but just recognize that if you're coming up across uh, problems with Yupeng, there are other systems and that you should try them out. So I hope that this video uh, helped you. If in fact you were thinking, I can't speak Cantonese, maybe some of these helpful hints will put you back on the path towards success in speaking Cantonese because it can be done. Okay. Um, thank you guys so much for all your support. If you do like the video on my channel, please subscribe and click on the notification bell and uh, like the video. If you do give it a thumbs up, follow me on Instagram and Facebook. I tried to update it. And I think once I get back to Hong Kong, I'll be able to update Instagram and Facebook a lot more frequently. Um, and also if you are interested in more uh, structured lessons, please do join me over on my website, which is www.cantolingo.com. Thanks so much, everybody. Happy learning. You can do it. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.